Ms. Ashley, good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Great to have you with us. And Doug Widmeyer, who's the Vice President of the Board of Advisors on the Stubblefield Institute, joins us via telephone. Doug, good morning to you. Good morning, Rob. I think you're referring to my dad. You mean Scott Widmeyer. Oh, I'm sorry, Scott. My my apologies. Yeah, my apologies. It's nice to remember my dad, though. Thank you. Yeah, great man. Absolutely. We all very much loved and respected him. Good morning, everyone. It's great to have you with us, Scott. Uh, the Stubblefield uh, Awards for Civility are uh, due again, and we're accepting nominations at this time of the year. Ashley, maybe you could uh, maybe uh, elaborate a bit. Absolutely. So we actually have a really exciting announcement that is going with these awards, and that is that we have partnered with Newsweek magazine to to receive nominations. And so Newsweek, and we thank Scott for his work to make that connection for us, is really trying to further civil discourse and really trying to provide balanced news and honest and transparent journalism. And so it was really a natural co connection between what we do in the Subblefield Institute where we are trying to promote civil political discourse so that we can talk about the issues that we all face in a way that respects each other's opinion, that doesn't silence one side versus the other. And so we're very excited about this partnership. And one of the things that this partnership brings with it is that we are accepting nominations from people all over the country. We've already had nominations coming in. And you can nominate people through the Newsweek website. And to get to that, it's actually easiest to go through the Stubblefield Institute website. It's on our, our homepage. It's very easy to find. And so if you go to stubblefieldinstitute.org, you can find the information for submitting a nomination. And we are accepting nominations in a variety of categories and so it's everything from a federal elected official and a state elected official to a community leader which I'm particularly excited about that that category in that community leaders are very broad it can be your county commissioner it can be just someone who is very involved in in everything and what we're doing though is we're looking for people who are committed to open honest discourse or people who are committed to working across the aisle if it's one of our elected officials and so when you're thinking about people to nominate you know really be thinking about who is a leader in that space Scott, I imagine that there might be some confusion as to what civil discourse is and is not. Civil discourse doesn't necessarily mean you can't strongly disagree with somebody. Correct. Right. Civil, civil discourse is about sitting down, having conversations with, uh, it could be your, your counterpart, could be your uh, political uh, uh, enemy of some sort, but, uh, but we, we want to get around the idea that that we're not enemies. We are all in this working together. Uh, and that's what the Stubblefield Institute is about. We have brought together, uh, we're now, we're, we're soon approaching our five year anniversary and we wanna thank Bill Stubblefield and, and Bonnie. Uh, we wouldn't be doing what we're doing today without their uh, endowment that they gave to the university, to, to Shepherd University. Uh, it has given us the ability to really uh, take this out, not just in the Eastern Panhandle region, but across the country. And as Ashley pointed out, with the, with the Civility Awards, we're able to go national now. Uh, we, we launched these awards uh, in 2022. Uh, we were focused primarily on uh, uh, federal elected officials uh, and, 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 and kind of national uh, kind of national institutions with, with stronger roots more in the Washington, New York area. We were focused on Congress, journalists, uh, trade associations. What Newsweek is, is going to enable us to do by expanding these awards is that we're going across the country. We're gonna be able to look for examples of civility, examples of civil discourse all over this nation. Uh, and it's not, this will be good for this will be good for society, but it'll also be good for the Institute because we want to take the Stubblefield Institute and expand it more on a national level. Uh, and that's what it's, we'll be able to do with this. Um, and I, I would also say that there are very few of these institutes operating across the country today. There are a handful. Uh, and it's, it's really impressive that we have one based at Shepherd University 
uh, and we're able to, uh, and Ashley does this day in and day out with her team, working with the college students there to really build leaders uh, who can take the education that they're getting at Shepherd and, and, and build out uh, a background that, uh, that lends itself to, uh, to civility, uh, to thinking about how you're communicating in your, in your political science courses, how you're communicating in journalism in general. Uh, and, and we hope this will, will change the equation and, and create a better world out there. Scott, you, uh, I think the 2022 uh, honorees, the Civility Award, epitomize of what we're trying to get at. Would you mention quickly yes. who they were and why we so chose to recognize them? Yes. So in 2022, when we when we launched the Civility Awards, uh, the Stumblewood Institute was just three years old. Uh, we had a very active board uh, that 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 kind of vetted the nominating process. Uh, the the award the awardees in 2022 were uh, recently retired Maryland Governor Larry Hogan, Republican. He's now running for the United States Senate. Uh, we also recognized. Two members of Congress, uh, Derek Kilmer from Washington State, a Democrat who is retiring this year, uh, and his counterpart on the Republican side, uh, William Timmons, Republican from South Carolina. Both of those gentlemen uh, epitomized working together because they led the re the, uh, the reorganization caucus within Congress to kind of think, think through how to reorganize Congress to make it work better for the American people. Again, that's what the civil discourse uh, organization is all about. That's what we're kind of focused on. And then we also recognize Suzanne Clark, and, and Suzanne is the head of the United States, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, based in D.C. And she she demonstrated how the chamber uh, has worked across the aisle in a bipartisan way. And then two journalists. Uh, one that we, I think a lot of us recognize day in and day out through his writing with the New York Times and the many books that he's authored, David Brooks. Uh, uh, David was one of our winners. And then the late journalist, Mark Shields, who many of us remember from his PBS NewsHour days to his syndicated columnist, uh, columns that ran in the Washington Post and, and other news organizations, news, uh, news outlets. And, and Mark uh, had we we had chosen Mark and then he unfortunately passed away. We were able to give the award uh, to his wife, uh, who came to our event. We had a really nice event in D.C. Bill was there, Ashley was there, uh, where we recognized these folks. This event took place in the fall of 2022, and uh, Newsweek was one of our sponsors then. Uh, but I think because we were able to build that relationship out with Newsweek in 2022, they saw. They, they could see how the Stubblefoot Institute was developing, um, uh, both on a local, regional, and national level, and they wanted to, to, to continue their relationship in a much bigger way. So we're, we're really happy. Uh, and as a a Ashley may want to add to this, we have uh, their chief White House correspondent is uh, a gentleman by the name of Dan Bush. Uh, and Dan um, leads their White House reporting today. And... Uh, We'll have the benefit of having Dan come to campus uh, at Shepherd uh, later this year to uh, to work with students uh, who are studying political science, who are uh, in communications courses there, uh, and uh, and that'll be another part of the collaboration with the Newsweek that we're that we're happy to uh, to see built out. Scott, you, Scott, you are actually one. Will you please address the procedure? How people one nominated, how they go through the uh, uh, pre pre screening or the screening, and also how the final selection is made. Yeah, Ashley, you want to take that? I, I'll jump all over that. So <laughs> when someone wants to do a nomination, like I said, you can go to the stubblefieldinstitute.org website, and you'll find a link there that will take you to Newsweek. It's a very simple form that you fill out that has the person you're nominating, their name, the city where that person lives. It helps it narrow it down a little bit when we're trying to screen people that you're not saying John Smith in Chicago, and we're trying to find which John Smith. So the where they live, and then your contact information, so your name, your 
um, email address and then a brief write-up of why you are nominating that person and what we will do is we will take those nominations and we will review those and uh, we being so first we have students who are assisting with this that they are looking through the nominations and um, starting to compile some basic information that is publicly available via the internet and then once we have done an initial screening for those who are not necessarily public figures so for example um, if someone nominates oprah obviously she's a public figure so um, for those who are not oprah uh, we will send a nomination packet to the person who nominated and ask them to give us a little bit more information so that way we can have a complete picture because not everything is available via the internet we do want to have um, the more input so then once we get those nomination packets back we will then have our group of our committee which is made up of people from the Stubblefield Institute from Newsweek and then we will have some um, judges who are national figures that will be announcing later later in the spring and we will review all of those packets and make our determination there uh, Nominations are open through March 31st, and then we will have all of April to be reviewing nominations. Is the excuse me? Is the award specifically for political uh, people, people involved in politics, or could this also be the the lady who you know in Otomo, Iowa, who rescues cats and and does? I don't I don't mean to belittle anything. <laughs> I understand. It's, no, John, 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 you hit the nail on the head. Uh, it actually, it, we actually do want to recognize the the cat person you're talking about in Otumwa, in Otumwa, Idaho, I, Iowa. We, uh, we, we, we will continue to recognize what's going on in the political world and leadership there. But, but be, with the expansion of this program this year, we, we want to go deep into the community side of this. We want to go into to look at what local business folks might be doing, local nonprofit leaders might be doing. We also want to look at what's going on in student journalism. We know that there are a lot of good pockets of activity happening uh, with, with student radio stations, with a student television station, with a student-run uh, newspaper. We want to look at those examples. Uh, uh, we want to look at uh, national and local philanthropy. Uh, so we we want we're gonna we're gonna go much deeper this time because we know that there are there are so many great examples of civil discourse and civility happening across this country, but we we're not showcasing it enough. And we the more we can showcase it, we can change the equation and we can make this uh, uh, make our country better. Um, and that's that's what we're going to be able to do uh, with these awards this time. So if you're listening to this in Martinsburg today, but you have friends that live in Des Moines or friends of in Boise, Idaho, make sure they know about this. Uh, and you can nominate those folks as well. Well, how could you possibly have the manpower to be able to yeah. go through all the nominations you might get nationwide? So that is part of our um Part of our partnership with That'd Newsweek. That would be a good problem to have. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Part of our partnership with Newsweek is they are providing us with stipends to employ students to help review that. And so as nominations are coming in, we are, um, we are very fortunate to be at Shepherd University and to have access to students who are excited about this. We have an entire club. It's called the, the Stubblefield Institute Civility Club who is committed and excited about promoting civil discourse on campus. And so they've joined with us. We have members of the Student Government Association who are interested in joining with us. And then um, as well as the Shepherd University Multicultural Leadership Team. And kind of a lead on, uh, Ashley fully intends to expand this, not necessarily for this event, uh, but expand this uh, uh, inter interaction with other universities in the state as well. Let me very quickly read over these eight, cat uh, eight categories. Uh, the federal elected official, a state elected official, a community leader, business, nonprofit organization, Co uh, corporate fellow, uh, give me a hand here. I have trouble pronouncing. Uh, Philanthropist. Thank you, Scott. <laughs> Individual philanthropists and student-run media. 
I gave you a pass yeah. on that one, Bill. <laughs> I, uh, Rob, I deserve a lot of passes. I may not deserve them, but I, I get a lot of passes. I want to double back to the student-run media in particular because, first of all, I think that's a great thing to focus on. But who categorically gets the award? Student media exists at the pleasure of the administration of the school or the county or however, however it's organized. And I'm thinking, I guess, more on the high school level, but that would be true of the college level too. So there's an element with student media where we award the ability that is granted by the institution or by the school district to make this happen. So where does that award go? So the award would go well, to. Go ahead. I say the award would go to whatever the title of the student-run media would be. So if, for example, at Shepherd we have the Shepherd Picket, so it would be the Picket who would receive the award. However, we are working with Newsweek because we do recognize that for some of these categories, traveling to D.C., you know, specifically if you're coming from somewhere out west, would be difficult and possibly financially challenging for you know, student-run media organizations, nonprofits, and specifically the community leaders, those three categories. And so we are also working with Newsweek so that way whatever student-run media organization we pick, we actually have students from that organization coming to the D.C. ceremony so that they can receive the award. It's not necessarily the principal of that school coming. It's the actual students doing the work. Let's carry back to the basic concept of this. Uh, in our very divided society, there are a lot of folks that are still trying to work with their colleagues, their next door neighbor, their uh, other elected officials, whoever the case may be. They're trying very hard to work with these individuals in a, an appropriate, civil manner. And we're just trying to recognize a very, very, very small number of these people that go the extra mile of trying to be civil. Can you be a right wing or left wing partisan and still win a civility award, Ashley, Bill or Scott? If you're civil, yes. Very much so if you're yeah, civil. As long, yeah, as long as, yeah, as long as you're demonstrating, you know, civil discourse and 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 and, and doing the going the extra mile to, to bridge the gap uh, of, to making sure that doing whatever you possibly can to make sure that people are understanding the multiple points of view out there and that you're not just you know shutting down uh, what the other person, the other voice has to say. If yeah. you patiently tolerate the idiotic things that those <laughs> other people are saying, <laughs> as, as we do daily on this program. Yeah, so, sometimes, it come, yeah, sometimes it'll come down to that. That's exactly right, John. Yes. I think, well, that's very kind of you. Benevolent. That's very benevolent of you, John, to put it that way. Yeah. You, you just can't say Having that you're patiently. Will, will go a long way. Yeah. You have other people say that you're patiently tolerating. <laughs> and, and, and when when is the date these awards are given? We've not announced the ceremony date. We're still nailing down the final details, but the ceremony will be in uh, June. Uh, Scott, have these picked up a nickname yet, like the uh, the Stubbies or the Civvies? <laughs> be you careful, know, Scott. Yeah, maybe maybe uh, we you know maybe we will go with the Stubbies at some point. That's right? a good idea. <laughs> a bad idea. Scott, I'm getting a bad a, idea. I'm getting a bad image of the of the statue here. I think we could have Short a squat statue. W. We and, could have a special stubby award. Yeah. And, and the civvies would, would not go over much better. <laughs> the the yeah. civvies has another meeting, but still, right? It could, it could all work. Scott, you're a master uh, of many things. Perhaps you'll come up with a more appropriate name. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll work on it. I like the names I've suggested. I suggest we stick with the, <laughs> one of those two names, right? Yeah. The Bonnies. You could go with the Bonnies. Go with the Bonnies as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's give uh, uh, Ashley a lot of credit on this. She's done uh, keeping the uh, the institute moving forward at a very brisk pace. COVID set us back, but Ashley's making up for it. But I want to put, uh, also uh, point out Scott. Uh, Scott, uh, his other title, he's one of the foremost communicators in the, uh, 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 in the country, and he's been able to use his, his communication skills, his contacts, to make a working relationship with Newsweek magazine. You know, he also, we have working relationships with a lot of other different organizations as well, but this is a direct product of Scott's, ability, or Scott's knowledge and uh, networking. Well, thank you, Bill. I, it's it's my pleasure to to make these contributions. And again, 
uh, we wouldn't be able to do any of this without uh, the support that you and that you and Bonnie mm-hmm. have given uh, to create the institute. So it's it's a real honor and pleasure to to make these for me to make these contributions uh, uh, along the lines of Newsweek and other. Uh, organizations, uh, because I believe in it, and I, I I love this kind of stuff, and I think I think we can make a difference. Now, thanks to and Rob, I think, and I think and I think I think having this based on a college campus is a game changer. Yeah. That is, they are the future. And if you look at the, the polling data out there right now on Gen Z, uh, there's there's a lot of good stuff coming out of the, gen- the out, of, out of that generation but there's also a lot of concerns it, it they, they feel very uh, there's a sense of loneliness that exists that exists with that generation but there's also a sense of hope and I think what we as as older as part of the older generations we we can we can work with them and, and help them uh, kind of build out a ge- uh, uh, build out a new society that that will work for them and and I, I think we have to be hopeful and I think that's what this institute's about. It's about building hope and inspiration. That's a great way to put it, Scott. Thank you much for doing that. We've got about a minute left. Uh, any final advice on how to nominate people, Ashley, and the things you might take into consideration? So when you're making your nominations, just really make sure when you are filling out the why you're nominating that person to focus on explaining how that person is working with other groups or you know, if it's political, if it's across the aisle, how they are really promoting discourse and honest and transparent possibly debate but really make that case and then um, if you receive a nomination packet please fill it out and return it to us that's a really big help and you could go to stubblefieldinstitute.org and there's a link on our website to the nomination page and nominations are open until march 31st but there's a to me a little bit of confusion on how much information you want in the nomination uh i i've I've made a nomination for all eight categories, uh, but I, there's a small box there that will expand. But I tried, I intentionally kept my verbiage fairly brief, thinking there's going to be a follow up to get more information later. Right. There will be a follow up. Um, it's just helpful if you put something, as you've done, yeah. meaningful in that box and not saying something like, I think they're doing a great job. Well, sure, that's great, exactly. but right. you know, tell yeah. us yeah. why they're doing yeah. a great job. But it does not have to be page after page no. after page. That no. will, that we'll will get come that later. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and this is not a popularity a little, a little detail. Yeah, this this is not a popularity contest. The public doesn't vote on this. Your vote correct. is your nomination, yeah. basically. Correct. correct. All right. Yeah. Hey, uh, yeah. Scott, thanks so much. Appreciate you joining us this morning. Great to have you along. Have a good, great pleasure. vacation, Scott. All right. Thank you, guys. See you later. Bye. Ashley, thank you very much as well. Thank you for having me.